see her from that tiny alien baby to being a normal hippo out in the exhibit, swimming around where the adults would swim in like three months, like in a fairly short period of time when we didn't even know she would live to be that old was just incredible. You want to be a zookeeper, that's cool. You want to work with animals, that's cool. But you never expect going into this field, hey, I'm going to get to raise a baby hippo one day. Like that, that's not a thing. <laughs> you know, some experiences in your life, you just know. Even if something similar to this happens again, nothing's going to come close to this. There's a term that I heard, I'm not sure I fully understand it, but someone said that she has stands. And that evidently is a combination of stalkers and fans that normally only people that are like insanely popular, like Beyonce or maybe LeBron James, have stands who they just follow every single thing they do. They know everything about them. And evidently, Fiona's the first animal in history that's had stands. Never in my wildest dreams would I have believed that I would work with an animal that had this kind of celebrity status on like a national and maybe even an international level. By being full out there, you know, not only anticipating a birth, but then documenting what happens, gives people a chance to really get engaged and, and see it. And, and not all animals make it. Um, and it has a lot of ups and downs. And uh, sometimes it can be really emotional. Learning about her every day and seeing her improve feels good. And so I think all those things wrapped together to make her a little international star. It's, it's crazy. I mean, we all have, you know, we have animals in our department that like our local community knows them by their first name and can literally pick them out of the crowd. But this is so beyond anything like that. I think in our like modern global world and social media and all that, I mean, even incredibly significant, important things maybe keep people's attention for a few days. People are still insane for her is just remarkable. I mean, I don't even think there, I don't know what else there is in the world right now that has sustained anyone's attention for that long. I'm just so happy that she's out there for everyone to enjoy. And I think that it's really heartwarming to see the same level of excitement in the five-year-old child and their mother and their grandfather all equally squealing with delight at seeing Fiona out there. And what, what is also cool is that it seems like Fiona gets that she's a celebrity. Like, it very much feels like she knows that those people are here to see her. I mean, she'll go out there and, like, play with people through the glass and in the habitat. Yeah, she'll go right up to the windows and she'll make eye contact with people. And it's just amazing watching her. She seems so comfortable with it and so okay with her celebrity status. I think Fiona has the added just interest and reward and excitement of knowing how far she came and, and just to see her in real life doing everything that we hope she could do. I think the, the people that come to visit her feel that and people come from all over the world just to see her in person. Uh, we're from Elkmont, Alabama and we're here to see Fiona. I'm from Orange, California and I came to see baby Hippo Fiona. I'm from Minneapolis, and my son Paul and I have been following the Fiona story since she was born. Las Cruces, New Mexico, southern New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, to see Fiona. I'm from Odessa, Texas, and I'm here to see Fiona. She is just precious. She's absolutely precious. As soon as I knew we were coming to Cincinnati, I decided that we were going to come see the baby hippo. My oldest daughter is an enormous Fiona fan, and so she would send us all the pictures and video, and then I'd get online and look her up. She does inspire people. She really does. I mean, people don't a little bit love her or interested in her. I've watched her since she was born, and I just think she's the cutest little thing, and I wanted to come and see her. She's just as cute as she is in person as she is on TV. And this morning she's out playing, and i got great pictures today. I'm very excited. And she is adorable. I mean, worth every mile. She's cuter in person than in her videos. And to really feel a part of something that's hopeful. I've already put it all over Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> she's so cute and chubby. <laughs> she's as cute as a bug here. Everyone's excited. They want to see pictures. I mean, I can't think of an animal as famous as Fiona is anywhere. It's absolutely insane. I never in a million years could have guessed that I would get to work with an animal like this, with this, this kind of pop culture phenomenon thing going on. And she loves being outside, and she loves hanging out with her mom, and she loves her fans, and she's just really good in all ways. 
But really, the biggest thing that we can hope for and what we want to see is her just living a normal hippo life um, and maybe one day getting to have her own family. I'm very thankful that people wanted us to succeed and wanted her to, you know, live and thrive and be a hippo because, you know, those dark days when you don't know if she's going to make it, then it was nice to have backup. The support from the community has been remarkable all along. So yeah, Fiona beer, Fiona ice cream, Fiona cookies. We like to ingest a lot of Fiona themed things. Fiona was like some so many so many people's real introduction to hippos. Like, no no no, this this is, they are magical, amazing, adorable animals and like you were gonna fall in love with this little thing and um, yeah between her being relatable and the, just the transparency and the honesty with the ups and downs, it was such an emotional roller coaster and it gave everybody something to root for together. She was very unifying, I think, at a time that like, it was very easy to be <laughs> fighting at the dinner table over politics every single night, but Fiona was that one thing that everybody is on the same page and on the same team and we all agree and we all want what's best for her. Whatever she ends up doing, she's definitely gonna have a, a following behind her. In every obstacle that she's faced, she's overcome far quicker than I would have expected, um, especially once she kind of got her feet on the ground. Nothing could hold her back, and um, she's, she's going to do great. All right, so give me some words or a word that describes Fiona. Princess. <laughs> Yeah, diva. Just diva. <laughs> so best part of this whole experience, anybody can take that question. <laughs> swimming with Fiona. Yeah, swimming with her was the best part. So why, why was swimming or being in there was the great moment? It was just fun. It like, was so fun. It <laughs> was, was just literally like... literally never going to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, literally, if you end up swimming with a hippo, you are going to be dead. So, And you, the animals that we work for the most part, you don't get to go in with. Yeah. So, yeah, like the, I mean, then you don't get to interact that way. And by the time we were at that point, she was kind of over all the health hurdles, and we could kind of relax and just enjoy the experience instead of being terrified of her, you know, getting sick or something going wrong. So, a common question that you guys get, I know we get a lot, is what does she feel like? Slimy. She's slimy. <laughs> yeah. Like all the time, slimy. What did somebody say? A wet avocado? Yeah. That was the nicest version. <laughs> it's like, she's like a slimy wet avocado. It'd be like an avocado covered in dog slobber. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, does she seem pretty affectionate? Yeah. She, yeah. She gets really excited when we come in and she like snorts and blows at us and grunts. And she gets really excited when she sees a new person. So. Yeah, she does all of her blowing stuff, but all of them are proficient at speaking hippo now. Yeah. What's one memory that probably has made you laugh the hardest? I still think all the, that all of you, all of you did, like walking in there and like you're sitting in a pool of poop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you're literally sitting in a giant jacuzzi full of poop, happy as can be. Right. Couldn't smile. think about holding it. Holding this, holding this cute little hippo. Mm -hmm. I love every time she would get in a pool that was too full and it would just overflow <laughs> gallons and gallons and gallons. And she's like, yeah, I... Yep, I'm big and fat. <laughs> I displace her. Yeah. It was always funny when she would attack that purple toy and, like, <laughs> for minutes at a time and just slam it into the wall and chase it. I love or when she stand back about from it and just shake her head at it. <laughs> yeah. like, like, what are you doing? So, the, the big question, big question Who's Fiona's favorite? Whoever has the bottle. Because <laughs> you'd have to ask Fiona that. <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks that they were the favorite? <laughs> and well, I can I can own and admit I was not her favorite. She didn't love me. I couldn't tell. We're all alone. Like it would be me with Fiona or Dan with Fiona. You know, like you don't get to see her with the others very often. I always feel like Dana was one of her favorites, despite Dana not wanting to be one of her favorites. Because whenever we needed her to do anything, perhaps it's the bark, but she's like, oh, okay. Similar to what Wendy was saying, as far as like Phoebe's the only one she would listen to. I think Dana was sterner than all the rest of us so she's like oh i guess i'll listen to her that's right sure <laughs> <laughs> what what's that bark sound like what what's no <laughs> get out of the pool now see i thought it was that high pitch fee fee so do you guys have like a, a, a fiona impression i think we greet a lot of us greet her by like <laughs> yeah. for whatever reason she does it back <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> the adults do not do that. <laughs> I've heard her answer a contact call like twice in the whole time she's been alive, and it's really cute and adorable, and I can try to do it. Do it. <laughs> you always do, do it, it when, when you're talking. She goes, like, like Henry will do his, like, murr, 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 and she'll go, whoo! It's kind of like a really high pitch, like, I don't know. She just I kind of, like... I don't know. It feels like she's like forcing it and she's trying for volume and it's like she's not good at it. Please don't use that. <laughs> so what's what's kind of surprised you about this whole experience, this whole Fiona phenomenon? The fact that it's eight months strong still. She's still a celebrity, still a phenomenon. Does anything compare to this, this experience at all? Nope. No, not, really. not even a little bit. <laughs> Have you seen anything that's just so crazy, either a guest wearing something or saying something to you or a reaction they had to Fiona, anything that you're just like, no, I've seen it all? I've been asked if someone can touch me three different times. Oh, can I touch you? And then we like to... Like, oh, oh, better you than me. <laughs> no. That'd be a no. <laughs> I'm going to give it a no. <laughs> I think the sheer number of people, I mean... Like, that wear, like, Fiona fan gear. Like, everywhere you go, like, in the airports or anywhere, it's like, I'm just, I can't get over the fact that it's just everyone is wearing Fiona stuff. I, I saw one woman who came, and she was kind of sitting in the crowd, and I think it was after her midday bottle, and we were all waiting for her to come back out. And when she finally came walking out, this woman, like, screamed and started bawling her eyes out and then immediately got really embarrassed about it and started <laughs> apologizing to everyone around her. And the crowd was like, no, that's okay, that's okay, we understand. Does any letter, email, call, interaction with the visitor stand out to you? There's so many families, too, who are like, mm -hmm. so many, like, we had a preemie that was born, and there's so many similarities between Fiona's story and what we went through, and we know exactly what you're going through, and stay strong and everything. But I think in the early days, in the early weeks, there were so many... Just like huge letters and envelopes and care packages of just support and, you know, we're rooting for you and huge posters being sent that was, you know, Grow Fiona Grow and all those kinds of things that was just unheard of. So is anything ever going to top this? No. And that's a little depressing, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's weird to think about. I don't, I don't know that... This probably feels like as good as it gets for all of us. Like nothing is going to get better than this, which is amazing but also sad. <laughs> so the people that have tuned into this, is there anything you want to say to them or to the community? Yeah, I mean, I want to say thank you to the community. The support we got, it meant the world to us. I've cried on the news before because of it. It really touched us. There were some times where our emotions were so high or so low, however you want to say it, and it was crazy and I kind of am getting emotional now. It's eight, month later, eight months don't. later. <laughs> um, but no, yes, thank you to everyone. That, it was insane. Yeah, I've worked at a couple different places and never had that. I mean, that was pretty insane. So It was one of those things, too, that you didn't even necessarily know you needed it. And then it was, yeah, we was needed there. it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that is honestly the benefit of her story being shared this entire time as well, right? So from that first day when you called and was like, hey, we're going to just uh, send out this press release. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, she's not, not even 24 hours old. I was like, well, what's going to happen? we got to tell people anyways. Let's just tell them. It's like, all right, let's just tell them. And I think the benefit of telling them, aside from everybody getting to love Fiona, is that all of her caretakers got to experience that like love and support that you you don't get to experience when you're doing stuff quietly.